This is an ADC warning. The crimes you're about to see are true. Only the names were changed to protect the ignorant. Tonight, you'll meet a dumb criminal with really bad luck. Surveillance cam footage of a man pilfering pork chops and a dumb criminal who was just faking it. All this and more on America's Dumbest Criminals. Welcome to America's Dumbest Criminals. I'm Daniel Butler. Our constant study of the criminal mind has led us to formulate several truisms regarding the criminal mind, such as the buses don't go out that far and the lights are on, but nobody's home. Join us now in scraping the poop from the shoes of justice as we open the files on America's Dumbest Criminals. First up, retired Captain Don Parker starts a trilogy on a dipstick, Bad Luck Brown. We called him Bad Luck Brown, which of course was a made up name, but I'm telling you, it was one of the most accurate descriptions that you could find for someone because the guy had terrible luck, most of it self-created. The first time that I had any occasion to deal with him came when he decided he was gonna knock over a liquor store. It's gonna rob a liquor store. He walks into the liquor store, place is really busy, he doesn't wanna create a commotion. So he takes out an envelope and writes a hold up note. Give me all your money, this is a stick up, I've got a gun. Slides the note across the counter to the clerk who reads it, her eyes get wide, she takes all the money out of the cash register, stuffs it in a paper sack, hands it across the counter, he takes a, the money, feeling very proud of himself, runs out of the store. The problem was that he wrote the hold-up note on the back of an envelope he had just received the day before from his probation officer, so he had his name, address, and zip code. <laughs> a relatively simple matter to run over to his house and pick him up within a half hour of that robbery. A major setback for some, but Bad Luck Brown doesn't give up easily. I was a, an investigator in those days. We got some information that some people were going to knock off a motel, going to rob the motel. So we had the place staked out. We had deputies inside the motel. We had people at either end of the parking lot. Myself and three or four others were lined up in the woods facing the front of the motel. Right in the middle of the stakeout comes this raggedy old station wagon driving across the parking lot and stops. We wonder if this is our guys. He gets out, walks over under a street light. We recognize him. It's the guy that we call Bad luck, Brown. What is he doing? He walks over to an unattended lawnmower that some maintenance guy had left out on the side of the building, grabs the lawnmower, takes it back to the station wagon, lowers the tailgate, throws the lawnmower, it's stealing a lawnmower in front of about 18 cops, jumps back in the car, and of course the supervisor said, "We, you know, we can't let him drive off with a lawnmower." So the other two deputies. Pull up. We're chasing him as we're running. We can't catch him. I decide enough is enough. I'm going to fire that proverbial warning shot to slow him down. I pull my gun out. Pow! I fire a shot into the ground. It didn't exactly do what I hoped it would do because it scared all the other cops. All the deputies hit the ground, but it did work because Badlock tripped over one of the deputies, sprains his ankle, <laughs> and that's how we caught him. Some people learn from their mistakes. Bad Luck Brown learns to make dumber mistakes. By far, his most successful uh, way of earning his title came some years after that. He decides he's going to break into an auto parts store and steal a bunch of batteries, car batteries. This is the middle of the summertime. Down here in Florida, it gets warm. I mean, it's probably 90 degrees, even though it's uh, nighttime. Well, car batteries are not the lightest things in the world. They weigh, what, 20, 30 pounds each. The guy is absolutely drained, loads the whole back seat of his car up. By the time he gets finished, he's exhausted, collapses in the front seat, car won't start, he's got a dead battery. <laughs> and the guy is about half drunk, he goes nuts. He's out there screaming and cursing and pounding on the hood of the car. Well, guess what? The lady hears all this yelling, calls the cops. I'm the first one on the scene, and I see this drunk out there screaming, pounding and cursing, trying to get his car to start with batteries, with a backseat load of car batteries. That's bad luck, Brown. ADC quiz number 382. Two shoplifters in a Florida bridal shop attracted so much attention, they were easily caught. How were they noticed? Were they... A, loud and obnoxious, B, clumsy and awkward, 
Or C, large men dressed as women? The correct answer was C. Here they modeled the fall look for two large guys. Paul Heaton recalls how a crackhead made a fashion statement in Zip It. Uh, it's dumb, but used and quite frequently to search a suspect and uh, pull several pieces of crack cocaine out of his pocket. First words out of their mouth is, these ain't my britches. These aren't even my They don't even fit. I don't know whose these are. You mean tell me those aren't your britches you're wearing? No, I, I found them. Whose britches are they? <laughs> They're my cousins. <laughs> so whose jacket are you wearing? Does this belong to you? No, no, man, I don't care. That, look, this isn't even my jacket. This is my brother's jacket. He let me borrow it. It's not That's my jacket. It's not my britches. It's not my underwear. <laughs> um, wherever it's found, it's not mine. I don't care. It's not my butt. <laughs> now, from the ABC security cam vaults, a story we call Dipstick. The woman posing as a prostitute is an undercover officer. The man in the truck, well, he's a dumb criminal. After he propositions the undercover officer, he realizes he doesn't have any money. Then he gives his best excuse. Yes, this dumb criminal just said he can't go with the woman right now because he has to get his oil changed. At least his priorities are in order. You know, I'd always heard that there was something women like about a pickup man. Now we know. Clean oil. Daryl Price of Charlotte recounts the story of a knothead who was faking it. We had a guy file a police report that he had been beaten up and robbed. And when we did the interviews, his robbery that he was describing to us at that time didn't match what he had described in the report. And, you know, it's, we catch on to those things pretty quick because there's a lot of fake robbery reports out there. Started questioning him harder and harder, basically becoming an interrogation. And finally, he broke down and admitted that he was off with a girl, another girl other than his wife, when her husband had caught him and given him quite a thump. <laughs> Well, that wasn't the problem. The problem was how was he going to explain to his wife how he had been beaten to, you know, practically to death. Uh, <laughs> so he made up this whole robbery thing just to, to appease his wife. Later on tonight's show, a dumb criminal who was sucking more than air. Next up, a drunk driver with his brain out of gear gets tested in One for the Road. David Shepler in Tampa, Florida, responded to a routine traffic call. He found a car smashed against a guardrail. Shepler found the driver still sitting behind the wheel, apparently unfazed. Our officer suspected the man had been drinking. That's not it. I need to see your license, please. Huh? Oh. <laughs> it's my boy. Yeah. You like baseball? <laughs> Can you step out of the car for me, please? Are you intoxicated, sir? No. No, I'm not. Have you had anything to drink tonight? <laughs> no. Not a drop, officer. Oh, you sure, huh? Yeah. Uh, I think you have been drinking, and I'm going to administer a field sobriety test to you. OK? Uh, Mr. Jones, is this your correct address on here? Yeah. What are you? I just told you I'm going to administer a field sobriety test. What are you doing? I heard you. What are you doing? I do much better on tests if I've had a little something to drink. Uh, are you let's ready go. now? Are you sure? Test me, baby. Are I'm you ready. ready? Take me home. OK, let's go. In New York, it used to be against the law for a man to flirt with a woman. But it was OK for men in uniform to harass cameramen. 
Now two guys with a wet nap for a brain lose their pants in swing shift. I was working the midnight shift uh, up in uh, the North Nashville area, and we received a silent robbery alarm, and I proceeded to the scene, and when I pulled into the parking lot, I noticed this subject come out the door and with a cash drawer in his hand, and he fell in the parking lot, and his pants were down around his ankles. So I, I approached the man and arrested him, and I went in to ask him what happened, and there was cash drawers and money laying all over inside, and they said that these two subjects came in. The one man that I had, his pants kept falling off, and he kept pulling them back up, and he got the cash drawers, and when they went to go out the door, the one with the gun went through the door first, and as the door came to, it hit the cash drawers, and all the money went everywhere in his pants. He let go of them, and they fell down around his ankles, and he fell in the parking lot, and he was arrested for armed robbery. <laughs> when I arrested him, he said, I guess I should have bought a belt before I came over here. <laughs> Now we take you inside the courtroom for trial and error. From actual courtroom transcripts, a dumb criminal participates in the shortest trial in the history of the world. Mr. Smith, you've been charged with grand theft auto. How do you plead, guilty or not guilty? Um, uh, first, Judge, um, l let me tell you why I stole that car. You see, there was this live grenade. It landed right Later tonight, an encounter with an actual fire-breathing dumb criminal on America's Dumbest Criminal. Next up, a car thief with a short supply of synapses gets restrained in Always Wear Your Seatbelt. Like any safety-conscious motorist, Dwight Ketchum put on his seatbelt before driving off. Unlike most motorists, however, the car he was in didn't belong to him. A passing patrol car witnessed the theft and gave chase. After a few minutes of weaving through traffic at high speeds and still not being able to shake the squad car, Ketchum decided to abandon the stolen vehicle. But Dwight couldn't leave the car. Our dumb criminal was apprehended while he was still struggling to get out of the stubborn seatbelt. Stop! Stop! I said stop! Stop! Next, from the ADC security cam vaults, pilfering pork chops. Here's a man closely inspecting a package of pork chops. Notice the date and time. That's right, it's New Year's Day at 4.14 a.m. But now, it's your job to catch this guy. Wait, where'd he go? Oh, no, he's not over here. He's, no, he's not in seafood. He's not down here. Come on, he's the only guy in the supermarket. The boss is going to have my job if I don't find this guy. I know he's got the pork chops now. Well, maybe I shouldn't have gone to that New Year's Eve party on the loading dock. No, no, there he is. Well... Either he just ate all the pork chops like sushi, or he's got them down his pants or under his jacket. I've got to get him. This guy should have made a New Year's resolution. I won't steal pork chops today. Next up, Paul Muller gives us the naked truth about the men who were gone in a flash. Well, this uh, tale goes back to the early 70s when streaking was in vogue. A lot of the college kids were uh, involved in that sort of a thing. And uh, one night I was working plain clothes and uh, I went to a restaurant downtown and I was sitting there eating and uh, there was quite a few people in the restaurant and uh, all of a sudden some people were, uh, I could see they were jumping and hollering about something that was going on while I looked up from my food and uh, two guys ran right past my table. The only thing they had on were their shoes and their underwear over their head. And I was shocked. I, I hadn't seen anything like this before. Of course, I'd heard, I'd heard about it. Well, they had a getaway car in the parking lot. The first guy got to the car and was able to open the door. 
he put his foot in the door and hollered, go. So uh, she floored it. The guy, the second guy, hadn't made it to the car yet, and he's running. <laughs> this fellow just ran on across the street up into the bushes. And uh, luckily, we had a police car several blocks away. The, uh, the car was stopped, and uh, we, we made the arrest on that particular individual. The uh, other one had made it up in the block, and although we did look for him for a while, we never did find him. But the uh, first guy was able to tell us who it was with him, and the man that got away walked along all night long with just his underwear and his shoes. <laughs> he made it home about 6 o'clock in the morning, was scratched all up, and uh, the police were waiting on him to arrest him at that time for that. <laughs> nice hats. Bad outfit. In Oregon, it used to be against the law for a man and a woman to ride in a car alone because the men would never ask for direction. Next up, Roy Williams has an encounter with a fire-breathing dumb criminal. I had a walking beat years ago in one of our uh, club areas, I guess you would say. And uh, as I was walking down, I saw this boy sitting in a car. And he was smoking a joint of marijuana. And as I walked up to the car, I said, Hey, what are you doing? Nothing, man. I asked you a question, what are you doing? Over. Can't you talk to me? What are you doing? I'm just waiting for my girlfriend. I'm just minding my own business. <laughs> <laughs> and it got to burning so bad on his tongue that he had to spit it out. And I put him in jail for marijuana with a burnt tongue and everything. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, hey, and one wick just, and it was gone. Oh, this is burning. And it stuck on his tongue and lit it up. Next up, a bank robber takes a short ride to the big house in The Robber with a Lemon. The staff of the Greenback Bank was surprised when a man came in and demanded money. Don't move. The tellers complied. The man had thought not to take his own car, but to take his work car on his lunch break. But he was surprised at how quickly he was apprehended. But no one else was. As the arresting officer said, how often do you see a big chicken going down the road? Got a little dumb. In Maine, it used to be against the law to appear in public with loose shoelaces. But as they say in Maine, better to be nude than unshoed. Well, that's all the time we have for this show. We'd like to thank the men and women of law enforcement throughout the country for their dedication and their stories. I'm Daniel Butler saying, don't be dumb, don't break the law, or we'll catch you next time on America's Dumbest Criminals.